At times we need to merge or offset the data. Merge or offset means update existing records and insert new records. One of the way to achieve merge or offset is to develop two statements. One to update and the other to insert. The queries in both the statements, update and insert, should return mutually exclusive results. This is very very important, otherwise the functionality will not work. Even though the statements can be executed in any order, updating first and then inserting perform better in most of the cases. If you follow this approach, update have to deal with lesser number of records. That's why it will be a bit better compared to the other approach where insert first and then update. We can also take care of merger offset using insert with on conflict columns do update. So with one statement, we should be able to achieve the merger offset without any issues. This is very effective and also with respect to the performance, this is better than update and then insert. When it comes to other databases, they have statements like merge or upset to take care of this uh, merging or upsetting of the data into an existing table. Postgres does not have either of them. It have this statement. Now let's see examples so that we understand what we are talking about from the syntax and semantics perspective. Let me load SQL magic. Let me create this database underscore URL environment variable. I am dropping this customer order matrix daily table if it exists. Now I am creating this table with four columns, customer ID, order date, order count and order revenue. In this table we will be storing the daily number of orders as well as revenue generated per customer. I am also creating primary key using customer ID and order date. Let us go through the two statement approach. Here we are inserting the baseline data for the month of August 2013. Once this is done, then we will actually see how to merge the data using 2013 August to 2013 October. Also as part of this insert statement, we are only inserting customer ID, date and count. We are not including revenue. In place of revenue, I am just saying null. So for all the records for 2013 August, we will be having count but not revenue. Once this baseline data is populated into the table, then we will actually follow the two statement approach where we will update the data first and then we will insert the data. Let us run this insert statement. You can see that 4708 rows are inserted into the table. Now we want to merge the data into the table using 2013 August to 2013 October. As we are using two statement approach, first we should update and then we should insert. This is better in terms of performance compared to inserting first and then updating. Now this is how the update statement look like for the months of 2013 August till 2013 October. In this case, we are not only updating the revenue, but also the count. So I am taking care of updating both count and revenue just in case. Even without count, just with the revenue, it should work. You should be able to update the data related to 2013 August in this case. In many cases, when we use update statement, we also might have to have where clause and have the filter condition to only touch that data which is relevant to us. So many times people tend to develop queries like this. This might work functionally for this purpose, but it can be buggy when you expand the range of the dates. And hence let me add that additional where condition here. In this case I just have to say where comd dot order date between this date range then it will only uh, try to update the records in that range excluding the other records. Sometimes we even might have subquery as part of the where condition to uh, update only those records which we are interested in. Also from the performance perspective this might be better. That being said let me run this. It will take a bit of time. Updating using this approach is not very effective and it can be time consuming and also it might uh, perform very poor. So just keep that in mind, you have to be very careful when you are updating too many records, especially using the queries like this. Now you can see that all the 4708 records which are inserted earlier with revenue as null is now updated with revenue. You should be able to validate by running this query. You can see the first 10 records, we have both count as well as revenue. You can also get the count by month, as of now we have only data related to 2013 August, this proves that. Now we can use this approach of inserting remaining data for September and October using this approach. In this case the range says this from August 1st to October 31st as we already have data in customer order matrix daily for August 1st to August 31st we have to have this additional condition. This will take care of excluding those records which are already there as part of this table using customer ID and order date as criteria. However if you tend to get the data which can be inserted into the table without violating any constraint, you can also specify the condition directly here. In this case you can say o.order date between 2 
thousand thirteen September first and two thousand thirteen October thirty first. That approach also will work without not exist like this. You can use either of the approach depending upon how you are processing the data as part of your project. Both will work without much of performance differences. Now let me run this command and you can see that nine thousand. 265 records are ins inserted into the table you can also validate by querying some of the records for 2013 uh, september here you can see the output the output is as expected we have both count as well as revenue in this table for this date you can also get the count by month you can see the count for each of these months august september and october as 4708 4848 and 4417 respectively let us see how, how we can upset or merge the data using insert with on conflict columns do update this is the complete uh, syntax it have three main clauses one is insert clause second one is select clause and the third one is on conflict clause you have to use all these three clauses to take care of upset or merge using one statement in this case also we will first insert data for the month of august 2013 and then upset or merge for the months of august 2013 to october 2013 let me truncate this table let me insert the baseline data in this case revenue is null there is no revenue populated now when it comes to using this uh, approach we need to have unique or primary key constraint on the columns specified as part of on conflict clause otherwise it will not work let me drop the primary key constraint here and let me run this query you can see that it is failing saying there is no unique or exclusion constraint matching the on conflict specification however once i add primary key like this i should be able to run this query without any issues you can see that 13973 records are inserted or updated also when it comes to the performance this is much faster than running the update and then insert if you observe when i run update it took a bit of time whereas uh, this it came back momentarily which means from the performance perspective this is much better you can validate the data for 2013 september and also you can get the count by month to ensure that the data is as expected in the table you can see the counts for august september and october as expected this is how you should be able to upset or merge the data into the table you can either use two statement approach versus one statement approach from performance as well as readability perspective the one statement approach is better even with respect to maintenance in the long term one statement approach is better for new folks it might be a bit uh, tricky you just have to practice enough to be comfortable with the upset or merge using one statement it is very very important for you to understand that